in French decorative arts and, as we will see, material culture. Um, there's a famous story in the Babylonian Talmud, for those who are uh, knowledgeable about such things, a famous story that has been, uh, and one of the few, in fact, in the Babylonian Talmud that has been sent up by Monty Python. It's uh, a story that's told in the tractate devoted to divorce, and it begins with the immortal words, what have the Romans done for us? Uh, and it goes on to talk about the roads and, okay, the roads. What the roads and medical care? Okay, the roads and medical care. The roads and medical care and schools. And it goes on like this. You can go to YouTube and check. So I could have started, what has France done for us? Um, and I would like to have been able to tell you that this lecture was scheduled in advance for the day after the French elections because we knew, because we knew that the Western world would be saved by France. Um, and that a return to the 1930s would be forestalled, at least uh, for the nearer future. I would like to have said that, but I cannot, because in all truth, um, uh, it's because our speaker was in Kyoto for the last three months uh, and could only come to New York now. Uh, and yet, this idea of learning from France, which is something the United States has done since uh, the 1770s, um, is in many ways part of what the generosity of the Cell's lectures uh, are about. They are a way of introducing uh, our audience in New York, students, scholars, and public, to the tremendous skill and reach of French decorative arts in the 18th and 19th centuries. And an institution like the BGC fits in uh, very, very well. Um, but just as the Bard Graduate Center began with, <coughs> in its title, only decorative arts as its subject, and then expanded to design and design history and material culture, out of the nucleus of the realization that the decorative is something universal, found in all societies and across all time, and therefore contains in itself uh, like an embryo, the possibility of expanding into questions which were then thought of in terms of design or material culture. So it is, in fact, um, in France. And what we are doing tonight is exploring part of the spectrum of um, decoration in France. And we are exploring it through, um, we could have thought about it in terms of Du Sommerat on the founding of the Musée Cluny, uh, Jules Quichera, the archaeologist and historian of costume, uh, who was the first, held the first chair in archaeology at the Ecole des Chartes. We could have thought about it in terms of Violet Le Duc, um, or through the Annales and the invention of material and social history in the 1920s and 30s. We're actually exploring, in a kind of typical Bard Graduate Center way, a line of study of the material in France that is almost entirely ignored in the Anglophone world. We know here of Claude Lévi-Strauss, of structural anthropology, wonderful as it is, and we have uh, no sense at all of the contribution of one of uh, Lévi-Strauss's peers, um, a very different kind of anthropologist, André Leroy Gourin, uh, whose innovation was to focus on material culture as it was used. And his notion, his key term, was technology the thing in motion, the thing as used. And over a long career, he explored and developed this looking at uh, distant societies. His own doctoral work was on the Ainu in northern Japan and uh, eastern Siberia, uh, and equally in, um, in Paleolithic and Neolithic art. So a vast canvas. And here at the Bard Graduate Center, we are actually publishing a translation of some of uh, André Leroy Gouron's work uh, in the upcoming year. It should be out by the fall of 2018. And where we are today with today's speaker is directly in that line, looking at a tradition of material culture that is really ignored in the United States. Um, why that is, is a puzzle. And in some sense, um, tonight's talk and the lunchtime talk uh, tomorrow that our speaker is giving are really explorations in a different language of studying the material and uh, at the meta level, the question of why it is that some powerful descriptive and analytical languages 
migrate across borders and develop secondary and tertiary lives, and others don't. Um, not necessarily because of the quality of the thinking at all. Um, our speaker tonight uh, really is the representative, the leading living representative of the tradition started by Le Roi Gouran, Frédéric Julien. Uh, he's an anthropologist, professor at the School of Advanced Studies in Social Sciences, the École des Institutes en Sciences Sociales. He was a deputy director of the Laboratory of Social Anthropology at the Collège de France and was responsible for the program on evolution, natures, and culture of the École des Institutes en Sciences Sociales until 2011. He was the editor for 10 years until just last year of the journal Technique et Culture. And you can see uh, after the talk we have uh, a range of uh, <coughs> volumes from this journal uh, for you to, uh, to explore. His own research focuses on the evolutionary processes and the meanings of technical and cultural phenomena, as well as on human-animal interactions in Africa and Europe. His specific field of research, in fact, is on uh, chimpanzees in West Africa. And we'll hear about the question of the material culture, um, material culture as viewed from the point of view of the non-human uh, tomorrow at lunchtime. That'll be the pendant to today's talk. His publications include Is Nature Cultural, 1998, The Natures of Man, 2007, The Untranslatable Dire le Savoir Faire, in 2008, Anthology, an anthology uh, volume of Technique et Culture, published in 2010, Gesture and Matter, 2011, uh, and most recently, um, well, Fixing the World, Excess, Leftovers, and Innovation, Waste and Innovation, which is uh, a catalog for an exhibition at the MUSEM, the Musée des Civilisations uh, Méditerranéennes in Marseille, and also Le Corps Instrument, The Body as an Instrument, published in 2017. And he's at work on a personal book retracing the beginnings of his work in Africa entitled Origins of Culture, Men and Chimpanzees in Perspective. So tonight, it's a pleasure to welcome Frédéric Julien to deal with the question, a journey into a French material culture journal. Uh, and I guess in the subtitle, it's not there, um, how material culture in France and material culture in the United States are different and perhaps the same. It's a pleasure to welcome Frédéric Julien. <laughs> he will speak from the podium and then answer questions from the table. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. I will, well, yeah, I, will be, I will face you, it will be easier. I wanted to start by telling that um, it's a great experience for me to speak uh, in front of art historian and specialist of, of uh, museum because, um, because there is very close link between the different conception of art and artisana and craft. And uh, I will suggest for my colleagues in France, but perhaps something put in, in common here, the idea of the word arts, uh, which is a way to, to link art and artisanat and, and craftsmanship. So because um, we, we have always some taxonomic problems and uh, we need always to solve it. Uh, in different way. My objective today is, I will say, to, to trace a panorama of the research, but also of politics of science according to the material culture question edition from the editorial viewpoint uh, I, I developed since two, 2006 uh, in Marseille. I, I will put the story of this journal in, in two moments. The first one um, uh, in, uh, with the CNRS laboratory called Technique and Culture, because before getting only a, a, a journal, it was uh, the title of a, of a laboratory in Paris, um, directed by Robert Cresswell, uh, plus a journal in uh, 1982. And in 2006, when I, I took the, uh, the redaction of, of the journal, um, we, we put this journal 
in, independently from the laboratory and make it a real journal uh, in a different place of the laboratory for, I mean, political reason, because as you probably know, French laboratories uh, have a short life duration. Every four years, we need to, to renew the existence of the laboratory. And the laboratory, technique and culture was just disappearing. And at the same time, the journal should disappear. So my colleagues asked me to take the journal out of the laboratory to make it uh, living longer time. So I, I want to perhaps start with uh, more remote routes. Um, this journal is based on Marcel Mauss' ideas about uh, a general anthropology in France and the idea of fait social total, uh, social total fact, and, um, and the idea is developed on techniques as uh, an efficient action upon matter, uh, une action efficace sur la matière, uh, which is, I mean, at the root, main root of the, of the, of the journal. Plus, in 1936, uh, his famous paper about body techniques. Uh, this paper uh, was mm, first launched in, in 1944 in a psychological uh, meeting, and it described all the way we use our body in different cultures. Uh, it was kind of typology. And, uh, and not uh, in a very uh, hermeneutic way or analytical way. It was only a, a description of different customs and body customs around the planet. And uh, the second main man, you mentioned it, with André is André Leroy Gourand. And André Leroy Gourand, uh, um, first experience in Japan, um, uh, published uh, first book Evolution and Technique, and I just heard that you are translating part of of his of his work. And the second part of uh, of his work during uh, when he came back from uh, uh, from Japan and, and started in the fifties uh, was a, a more general anthropology uh, with biological anthropology, physical anthropology at that time, uh, paleontology. He, 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 he made um, a research on craniology and the evolution of cranium in different species. So he got uh, a PhD in paleontology and in ethnology, social anthropology for America, uh, and developed his team around the prehistory in Passevent and, of course, our art history of prehistoric art history. Few images from Japan. Uh, during three years, um, between 1937 and 1949, in Hokkaido, uh, he described all trad Ainu traditions. Um, and this experience was uh, linking archaeology and ethnography. And what was very interesting is to see what is developing every day, pictures. He was taking every day pictures of the people and of objects. In a, in a, in a, in Hokkaido, and for, and uh, in uh, central uh, uh, Japan also uh, for three years, uh, and uh, his wife was just taking pictures also. So drawings, pictures, and notes were just uh, made at the same time. And uh, when we think about digital age and the possibilities we have today, uh, and we think we are very fast taking picture, he was uh, fast, uh, even faster than some of us with uh, our computer every day taking and developing pictures. He was also uh, buying objects for the French Musée, future Musée de l'Homme, was not uh, uh, open at that time, but he was just uh, uh, trying to, to bring as much as possible uh, object with the money he got from Hokkaido and from, uh, from Kyoto area. Um, uh, so his aim was to, to make a PhD on uh, uh, Japanese civilization, but also uh, to, to collect uh, objects to bring back to, to the Musée de l'Homme and to the Musée Guimet, 
which is Asiatic Museum in, in Paris. And on the left picture, you wear um, traditional costume from uh, Hokkaido areas and wearing uh, hat and uh, different uh, wearing objects. Um, on uh, forgotten pages of uh, on Japan, uh, published in, in 2004, uh, uh, Andre, um, we discovered a part of unpublished papers from André Leroy Gourand, all the letters he sent to France, to his wife, to colleagues in Musée du Guimet, an art historian, Jean Buot. Um, and we have an idea of, um, of his thought, thinking, uh, and of the way to, to manage data and to start to make some uh, classification uh, and the way he worked doing uh, description and drawings at the same time and trying to link classification uh, from external viewpoint and from the, from the Japanese viewpoint at the same time. Uh, in 2010, we, uh, 11, we published Gesture and Matter. Uh, you, you can have a look on, uh, is on the table, uh, where we put unpublished papers, um, drawings, and pictures. We took pictures from uh, from the family and from objects uh, left in, in his family. And the family opened open the door and uh, we, we were able to, to take pictures of, of some objects. What was interesting on this uh, publication on Emma, he was interested by a representation of, uh, the representation of animals on Emma. Um, and what is interesting is that at the same time he's, he's working on contents, on meanings of the Emma and on the support. And he's, he's drawing all the different types of, um, of the wooden tablets and uh, the frames, the different frames. So the drawing is used to describe the technological aspects and the meanings of, of the ex voto. Um, and that kind of object he, he bring back to, to the Musée de l'Homme. And those ones are came from the family because the objects now are, are in the Musée du Quai Branly. Uh, and uh, in the Musée du Quai Branly, we, we are not allowed to, to make a reproduction of the, of the objects. We have to to pass through agencies and to pay a lot of money to, to get <laughs> this thing possible uh, and to print uh, the EMA. So the reason why we went to, to the family and discovered this kind of treasures. Um, and we published it in 2011. When he came back uh, in 1939, just before the beginning of the war uh, in, in France, uh, he wasn't able to publish his PhD. He, he was able, of course, to, to finish his, uh, his PhD. So uh, during uh, the, we call that the drôle de guerre, a period between uh, at the beginning of the war where uh, the French were just mobilized in different parts of the country. And André Laura Gourand uh, tried, wrote this book, Evolution and Technologies. Um, where he described a lot of different actions, principles, and what we call elementary action on matter, uh, all the different gestures involved in, a, in, a, in different technologies. And most of the drawings came through, uh, from uh, Japanese example, Japanese uh, illustrations, and uh, as student, we didn't know that because um, I was one of uh, André Laura Gourand's students at the end of his lab in the Collège de France. Uh, and uh, he didn't quote too much uh, Japan, his Japanese uh, experience. Uh, and, uh, but most of the drawings came from Japan. So most of the French cultural technology uh, is driven by uh, this kind of experience. What was interesting is the way he described uh, the different um, way to, to wear and to carry things uh, on, uh, on the head in different countries and different costumes. And this kind of cultural comparison by drawing it uh, is if we think from our time, it's very interesting because it makes um, 
a certain equality between cultures. And uh, you have a European uh, peasant from Romania or from, uh, or from France just beside uh, a Balinese person or, or Japanese or an African uh, costume. So this kind of equality uh, was at the foundation of the Musée de l'Homme and of the uh, André Laura Gouran uh, uh, willings in terms of not of cultural relativism, but of cultural equality. And uh, that was something that has to be, to be said uh, in a different way today, but uh, it's very important. Second part of his work is on interdisciplinary. Uh, André Louragouran was interested by topics, by subjects, not by disciplines. So when he, he need to, um, to work on um, on the um, relation between human and animals, he, he has to, to become to to get information from the paleontology, from the archaeology, from the zoology. He has to be a zoologist to be to be a good a social anthropologist, and it's in, and it's the reason why he went in, in so different um, uh, discipline and sub disciplines. Um, only uh, speech and gesture, le geste et la parole was translated into English during the 80s. It was very late because it was published in 64. It was a very important book uh, for us in, in France. Um, it's like uh, one of the ma major books. Uh, um, if we compare uh, Levi Strauss's uh, work uh, on structure elementaire de la parenté, I think speech and gesture is kind of uh, similar uh, and famous book in France. Uh, what link with technique and culture? Uh, André Laurent Gourand was uh, uh, at the beginning of technique and culture and helped to, to set the journal uh, in, uh, in the beginning of the 80s, just before he died in 85. Um, but one of his main students, Robert Creswell, born in New York, uh, and uh, who was trained in uh, Princeton University, uh, went to France uh, to, to free France in, uh, in 42, and uh, he, he got France in, uh, in, uh, in 44, and um, he got a grant after uh, his um, army, uh, for a five years grant, to, to study at the Sorbonne, and he started by history and moved quickly to social anthropology and became the first, one of the first uh, André Leroy Gouran student. And uh, he developed uh, expertise on um, uh, rural um, cultures in Ireland, Lebanon, Morocco, became a professor at Paris 5 and developed what we call the cultural technology, so the s social dimension of technologies. So the, the, bo the book, his books and, uh, and, the, and the journal was dedicated to the, uh, to the social dimension of, of techniques. In Branly in 2001, one, uh, 11, when we published the anthology, uh, Bob is on the right, uh, he was around 90 at that time, uh, gave a very interesting talk. It's on, you, you can have it on the uh, Musée du Quai Branly uh, uh, YouTube uh, system. And a uh, few images from Ireland in, in, the, in the 50s. At, w at that time, uh, Ireland was very poor, and, uh, and uh, you, s you can see uh, or people are just uh, working in a, in a field at a time, and in Morocco on the forge uh, blacksmith people in, in Morocco. Um, in 1976, when he created the, the, um, the laboratory, uh, so and uh, at the beginning of, of the journal, a lot of different French journal was just starting their life at the same moment. That's quite interesting to see that w this kind of journal wasn't on the only one in social anthropology. The journal Réseau uh, was more dedicated to network and uh, high technologies, was just launched at the same time. Culture Technique, Culture Technique 
from the CNET, which is communication. Uh, now, nowadays, it's orange, but at that time, it was related to, to technologies in a, in a very broad sense. Uh, gesture and images, another journal. This one just disappeared a few years after. Um, in parallel, of course, to man, tools and tillage, l'homme, études rurales, terrain, ethnology, française. Uh, so, it, at this time, it was quite a boom, and a lot of uh, interest about uh, material culture in, in France with different journals uh, dedicated to different technologies. What we developed uh, in, um, in, uh, in this current of thinking um, it's spe special alliance between, I will say, uh, structuralism, uh, Marxism, and cultural technology, and uh, history of techniques. Um, and uh, Robert Creswell developed the idea to, to study not only the cultural variation about uh, techniques, but the structural variation on different level of uh, and uh, very in a very uh, conscient way or very unconscient way on uh, on substrate of uh, the structure and on the place of technologies uh, into different level of uh, functionment of societies in that way he, he was a real uh, american anthropologist uh, influenced by Kruber, by, by murdoch by all the the american uh, anthro social anthropology but in some times, people were just developing also a kind of internal epistemology, uh, not an external uh, epistemology uh, as it was uh, usually made in France, but from the experience of the field, from the experience of the material, how should we um, argument and objectify uh, our reasonings? So uh, when I came into this uh, team, in the uh, as a student in the, in the 80s, at the beginning, uh, in fact, of technique and culture, uh, I, I, I observed some quite, quite surrealist debates with some of, of my colleagues now. Uh, they were talking about the usage of chronometer in a field. And uh, people were fighting, should we use a chronometer or not when we are just monitoring uh, the time of uh, work, of labor, of, of the people. Uh, no, because there is no chronometer in, in that culture, so it, it wasn't, uh, you are just um, pervading uh, the, the situation. So a lot of very detailed uh, discussion about methods and how to describe. And um, what, what I can say is that in a certain way, this team was built on an utopia, uh, an utopia to describe in the same way a lot of different uh, techniques around uh, in different cultures. And this kind of uh, project, in fact, um, last few few years. After two or three years, we, they they just realized that it was impossible because all the technologies were too, too complex to, to be compared. But what's, what remains in a very strong way, it's comparative approach, historical approach developed by Francois Sigaud, for example, and debates on the efficiency, efficiency of technologies, efficiency uh, in terms of um, symbolic aspects, uh, performative aspects, we will say today, nowadays, um, and uh, on material and immaterial topics. Uh, and we develop kind of things influenced by Le Roi Le Gourand, which is the idea of chaîne opératoire, so sequences of uh, activities uh, um, described in a chronological way, uh, developed by Nicolas Govorov, Marie-Claude Mayas. The idea of a technical system who was borrowed to Bertrand Gilles, uh, who was an historian of uh, technologies in, in France. Uh, describing matters, objects, gesture, knowledge, and representations, and developed by Pierre Lemonnier, who is now a famous uh, uh, French social anthropologist. Um, gestural analysis uh, from, uh, I will say, a more developmental viewpoint. Um, and uh, the 
Anthropology of Style, Technological Choices by uh, Pierre Lemonnier or Bruno Martinelli. So all those different methods and topics were developed by different partners related to, to, to the journal during uh, the first uh, 15 years of existence of this uh, journal. For example, this, this is an operational chain of, a, of, um, ill, uh, of an ill um, trap uh, this made by Nikola Govorov. What is interesting in this example is that it's describing not only activities and sequences of makings, but also the names the, uh, of the part of the object made. And uh, he observed uh, in, a, in a parallel way uh, a sequence of words and sequences of uh, actions, and uh, they don't fit well. And in, in the, this um, in, in the bias, he was able to demonstrate that this object was related to some sexual dimensions uh, and evoking different symbolic dimensions. So the technology of and the description of the chaîne opératoire could be very, very, very fine-grained in, in some ways. Um, we some of uh, our colleagues just developed few things like that at the beginning. We, you can see we, we have only IBM typewriters and no computer at that time. So when I uh, uh, scan all those elements, uh, I wasn't able to, to make OCR. And um, a lot of uh, books were published in, um, on thematic issues. This one on silk, medieval silk, uh, which are out of print. Uh, another one on elementary practices. So it's just to, to show the big range of uh, interest of uh, my colleagues uh, at the beginning of this uh, journal. Um, and it is one of the examples of the, of the first book I made, uh, which is called uh, Time, Bodies, Techniques, and Aesthetics. That was the first one in 2007. Uh, and uh, and we, in a certain way, with the, the School of Sociology of Innovation, with Bruno Latour and Madeleine Akrich, who participated to, to the journal also, uh, we, we fight against the idea of uh, uh, dualism in, into techniques and the, um, in the vain opposition between social and uh, economics between social and, and, and techniques. And we work more on how to relate, how to write, re-articulate uh, our analysis of the social dimension of, of techniques. Um, some of us, like Jean-Pierre Varnier, were more interested by the idea of subjects influenced by, by Michel Foucault uh, and uh, myself. I just tried to, uh, to bring into um, into the domain of anthropology, the idea of non-human technologies. Um, so when I, uh, I came in, into the, this journal in 2006, I, I just made the opposite that the CNRS wanted to, to, we, for us. They asked us to, in fact, to, to stop the journal and to make the journal only on the web. And we said, we don't want because we are very proud of the paper and we want to publish this journal for a bigger audience. So reason at that time I just get, tried to get money and to get new collaboration and, uh, and, uh, and we put it in color, in, in better quality, high quality for a journal, for an academic journal and uh, we have to fight uh, with um, the publisher, with a lot of administration to, to make it possible, but in fact, we, I think we, we succeed in a, in a certain way. Um, but what I, I try to do is to, to give a, a new life to the journal, bringing uh, historian, art historian, psychologist, sociologist uh, in, in the journal, in the expertise of the journal, uh, science, technology, uh, uh, STS uh, people and uh, working by thematic, only by thematic, and, uh, and organizing meetings and long-term dialogues. Uh, each issue needs two or three years 
of preparation. So we have several issues uh, uh, in parallel uh, each time. Um, what we thought with my colleagues is that we web uh, web design uh, is different than uh, printed design. So and we have not the s not the same uh, read readers from the web and from the paper. And in fact, we, we thought that the web with PDF is more use, use, uh, useful for researcher and, uh, and, the, and the paper for a, a, greater, uh, a broader audience. So we, we started a long term uh, thinking about, about that. And that's a few examples of the, you have that on the table, but gives you an idea of the different formats of the, of the journal. Uh, from 83 to today to today um, uh, what we need to, to think in a certain way uh, it's how to face um, open access uh, how to work slowly how to develop uh, original papers based on field research uh, and uh, in fact, it's quite a risky business for young students to come into interdisciplinary projects like that. And it's kind of risk, and we are always uh, talking with uh, our institution to, to make it possible. An interdisciplinary uh, needs involve also um, several challenges. Um, in fact, a reflection of the, of the place of images, uh, because most of journals are mainly made of text, or of written things, which is much more valued in France uh, than the images. Uh, that's a problem. Images are dirt, are, um, are not so evaluated in, in, in the French uh, evaluation system. Uh, and the material culture plus images, you are in bad shape. <laughs> so we, 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 we needed to, to convince a lot of uh, people. And what we didn't want it to make, uh, several journals came into um, color, uh, Terra, for example, or Gradiva at the Musée du Quai Branly. But they reframe, uh, they give documents to graph to graphic and to designers, and they just make something very beautiful. But we wanted to, to, to keep the power on the images, the power on documents. And that was one of the main challenge uh, for us, was to maintain the quality and the quality of authenticity and veracity of the document. And um, it, it was very, uh, very important for us. And we didn't use uh, at any time uh, documents or pictures uh, not labeled by, by authors. So most of, we didn't pay anything, for example, in, in the journal. We didn't buy any documents. We, we asked a uh, researcher to bring uh, original documents and certified documents. That's one of, the, of our um, you, um, rule in a, in a, in a, for different um, uh, aspects. Because um, an image, it's something very, very complex with a lot of layers. And I took this one. Uh, in America, you, you know, I, I think everybody can can recognize this. This image came from birds, <laughs> from Alfred Hitchcock movie. And uh, this image has a, a short story. When I, I first edited the first um, uh, issue of Technique and Culture, it was on, on Les Natures de l'Homme, Human Natures. And my idea was to use uh, um, Alfred Hitchcock uh, image from uh, Les Oiseaux, from birds, uh, for the opening with T.P. Adren. And um, it was impossible to find the image on uh, on web, and uh, I wrote to Metro de Goldwyn Mayer, and uh, they said uh, you can pick these images from on our site website. 
it was bad. It wasn't the right images I wanted, I saw in the, in the movie. So we went into a cinema at the last uh, show, <laughs> very late night, and uh, I asked uh, one of my friends to, to cut an image in, in, uh, in the film. And we scan it, and it gives you that. So it gives you an idea of the materiality <laughs> and of the process. Um, there is sound, there are images, there is uh, celluloid, um, there is style, there is a lot of uh, qualities we don't have on the web. And uh, because we, people reframed uh, the image and gave only the, uh, the main uh, central part. So it's just an example to, to show that what is important and uh, it, it, I think it is one of the um, role of the of the um, of the researcher is to come into very deeply into the um, it is editorialization process. Uh, what we can add as a scient as a scientist is also some added value uh, of the edition, and uh, it has to be uh, um, uh, said in in different way. Uh, that was the first um, graphic model of the, of the journal, Les Natures de, de l'Homme, and the image of, uh, uh, of T.P. Adrien as an opening uh, for the thematic issue. Uh, I was interested by uh, Alfred Hitchcock, not only by Alfred Hitchcock, by, by, but also by Saul Bass, uh, because Saul Bass worked at the end of the 50s, beginning of the 70, 60s, and it was at the time um, of the beginning of the, of the research on technologies in, in France. And at the time, I think we are just uh, a changing time. We are still in modernity, in the belief of the progress, and the end of the progress of, uh, related to technologies. So at this time, the graphics were very interesting in a way that um, you, you can see uh, text and images on teasers made by Sol Bass, and you see uh, text moving I into the images and um, and fading up from uh, from the images. So it's quite an interesting model to think uh, the web also uh, nowadays, because on the way we on the web we we. Um, uh, should the web be an adaptation of the paper, of the paper uh, put in the same way or on the web? Uh, so I think uh, Saul Bass, 15 years ago, uh, uh, 50 years ago, uh, gave some solution to, to that problem. So that's in a kind of opening of gesture and matter, another example. The idea was to decline different visual aspects and uh, the varia, uh, so spontaneous paper we received in the journal, were put into uh, something I, I called uh, split screen, as uh, we use it in, uh, in cinema. Or for the curiosity, it was uh, quite the, the same, split it in, in much more parts. Give you an idea of the, of the graphic uh, I wanted to, to, to come into, because the graphic is very meaningful for science too. And that, that's, that's the main point. But what is important too, it's to go with the printers and to work in very detailed manner uh, on the fabrication process. So at each issue, we go uh, uh, with the printer and uh, check the color, colorimetry and all different controls of, of, the, of the different parts of the, of the, of the journal. So that's different example of the journal, Nature de l'Homme, um, and different partnership we developed to make uh, this, um, this journal la uh, alive. I will say um, um, projects with um, Bruxelles University and Tervuren Museum for the issue on the uh, things, gestures, and words. Technologies was made with uh, UCL, University College London. Uh, material culture was an anthology. Gesture and matter was made with uh, 
uh, Japanese colleagues and objets remplaçables with the Musée du Quai Branly. So at each issue, we develop some collaboration, from French collaboration or international collaboration uh, to make it possible. So uh, with the anthology, we published 36 papers uh, on a total of 1,000 published uh, before, so it's kind of best off of the journal. Uh, and it was quite a very interesting inter exercise because we, um, we put in the same way different historical dimension of the journal published on IBM on, uh, on different technologies uh, in, the same, in the same way. Um, of course, uh, we were a lot criticized by people, but also uh, welcomed by some colleagues. And one of the main was uh, Claude Lévi-Strauss. He was 98 years old at that time, and he wrote a, uh, a short letter, but very, 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 very kind letter to, to support uh, the journal. And, and um, the adjunct director, uh, Isaac Kiva, also uh, wrote something like that. And um, for us, it was quite uh, encouraging. So my idea with, uh, with technique and culture was to, to link old ancient colleagues who were, we just um, uh, launched the issue, uh, the journal uh, in, uh, at the beginning of the 70s, a new generation. Um, and sometimes it works, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work, but uh, the collaboration, for example, with uh, UCL colleagues uh, and we try to think about uh, how to manage in a new way the journal. Uh, for example, that's example taken on a, on, a jo on, speci on specific seminars and our way to tell stories, so uh, social science stories. Uh, we are developing video or graphic uh, or comics uh, for the journal, I will give you some example, and we we'll, and we will organize to three years ago a big meeting in a, in the museum in the Musée des Civilisations in Marseille on um, remains on how to fix the world. Uh, this big issue related to to an exhibition, and uh, we restructurate the um, the journal. Uh, in different parts, and uh, there is no any more varia. The varia are online now, and uh, uh, all the issues are thematic. Uh, that's a different dimension of the of the of this last issue. Uh, what was particular with this issue that we we wrote it in in English, and we send it to different. Um, um, disciplines, geography, uh, archaeology, uh, arts, uh, social anthropology, of course, sociology, and we got 90 answers, non 90 propositions for this issue. Uh, we kept only 50, and uh, but it was big, too big, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, uh, to, to be published like that. So we we accepted papers online with a translation to French uh, on, uh, on the printed uh, journal and, uh, and short papers uh, for the written version. Uh, what, was, what is particular with this issue that we have um, big scale analysis with, for example, this image came from um, uh, satellite uh, waste around the planet, made by a geographer, Jos Lepovsky, who works in, a, in, um, in Canada. Uh, this one is from Chris Jordan and uh, Baptiste Mont-Saint-Jean, who, who made the ethnographic studies of, uh, of the seventh continent of plastic continent in, into the uh, ocean. Um, another example who came from Takezawa, uh, a Japanese ethnographer who worked in a, in, um, uh, in Iwate uh, after the tsu tsunami and study the destruction of the material culture of, of the Japanese of, of this area and trying to collect the memory, the lost memory of, uh, of Iwate 
after the disaster. Uh, you can see some of uh, the most uh, striking images uh, we published in. Uh, everything was destroyed uh, in, uh, in that area and uh, people were looking for their memories. And uh, Takezawa, who was um, an ethnographer specialist of Africa, uh, went to the place to help people uh, and stay for months helping people and trying to recover the memory, uh, to find images, pictures from uh, the family. And um, uh, in Japan, his work is very, is very important, but it's very debated uh, in, in, in the public because some people don't want to, to recover the memory of this terrible experience. And some of want to, to create a new museum. So Shoichiro Takezawa is just doing uh, an exhibition in Mimpaku at the museum in, uh, in Osaka right now. Uh, but the exhibition is a way to, to, to raise the debate in the, in the, uh, in the Japanese society. Uh, another paper in this, um, in this issue was made on Fukushima um, by Yohan Moreau, who, who talked about the residue of nuclear, uh, nuclear waste, in fact. And uh, it is a very uh, abstract paper on the idea of neutrality of nuclear, because, as you know, uh, nuclear, um, uh, if we are not in contact, we don't feel the radiation. Uh, and um, how to explain the idea of the neutrality of this kind of uh, effects of the waste. And uh, we, we involved a, a young uh, uh, Japanese uh, photographer who worked in a uh, Fukushima area to, to publish uh, our, our um, photographies. And we, we tried to explain in a different way the idea of neutrality using uh, a mangaka, a comic maker from uh, uh, from France and from Japan to, to explain in a different way. way. Um, so, I, I, I have to move, I think. Uh, uh, different type of papers, uh, different complexities, a big heterogeneity of, uh, of uh, proposition. This one came from Pierre Lemonnier, who works in, in, um, in Papouasia, New Guinea, on the islands. And, uh, um, I just came back to, to the front page, um, which is, came from the same area. Um, it is the story of a caterpillar bulldozer, um, because health problem in this very remote place of island of uh, Papouasia, uh, Pierre tried to, to build an uh, airplane strip. Uh, this story, in fact, uh, last for almost 20 years. Finally, succeed to get funds to bring with with the Clinton Foundation to bring uh, a caterpillar bulldozer and to build this, uh, this this trip. But the caterpillar just died before the end of the of the building, and uh, they got a big problem because it was just stuck in the center of, of the of the airplane uh, strip. And the only solution for those people who have only showers and uh, and uh, um, uh, coop coop, uh, I don't know, um, axes uh, uh, was a kind of problem. And they s solved it by burying the caterpillar. Uh, and he explained all this story, very interesting because very illustrative of the paradox of the, of the modernity and the globalization in a, in a, in a remote uh, uh, culture. Uh, in, uh, in the book, we, I, I made a, a, a photographic essay on a masquerade in, a, in Guinea. Uh, and this kind of mask developed by uh, by the woman at the, at the place was made by, with a calabash taken on waste, on garbage. And they just provoked uh, the um, griot and the musician 
and myself and of the observer and uh, I, I just try to to tell uh, uh, an ethnographic experience in a different way not with a writ only with, with written uh, restitution that's the um, main flyer for Vidordure which is uh, the expo exhibition related to this issue in the, in the museum in, in, in Marseille uh, that's an example uh, an image of, uh, of the museum main entrance uh, it was quite a big story to bring garbage into a cultural museum. And uh, I, uh, I can detail that if you're interested. Um, because it was quite paradoxical in such wonderful place to bring this kind of question. But after one month, it was just open last month, we got more than, uh, I think, between 30 and, and uh, 40,000 uh, visitors, so it's quite a, a big success. Uh, that's an idea of uh, it's 8,000 square meters with a lot of rooms and a lot of different topics uh, related to um, the question of destruction of objects and rehabilitation, second life, and all the different innovation we can imagine around the world. To, to face this kind of um, uh, problem. And uh, my colleague, uh, Jan Philippe Tastevin, who was just talking behind uh, this tricycle, um, studied the Zabalin people in Cairo. Zabalin people are copt people uh, who worked on, uh, on garbage, are the best recycler in, in the world. They recycle more than 70 percent of uh, of debris in a, uh, and uh, detritus in a, in a, um, in the city and uh, it is one of the objects the museum accepted to 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 import from cairo uh, it is a motorbike with a, a lot of decoration and it show that uh, oh People can be proud of their of this kind of work in some places. In some places, so we wanted to reverse uh, the symbolic dimension, uh, bringing this kind of uh, uh, object in, in the museum. Of course, the journal uh, and this issue is, is discussed in a, on the web, and uh, I just discovered uh, a website, discard studies on, on the topic, and they quote. Us. Um, you didn't get it, but uh, just before we made an, uh, another issue on uh, linking uh, design and contemporary art, um, uh, taking the idea of bricolage and uh, engineering and uh, technical aspects of the modern art. Uh, and uh, it was quite um, uh, interesting and a success in, in a way that we collaborate with the Villa Arson, which is a, a school of art in, in Nice, in uh, southeast France. Uh, and we worked with uh, students and ceramic makers or wood makers. And we organized a festival. And we had debates with uh, specialists of uh, um, objects from the Musée du Louvre and a debate with uh, Tim Ingold. Uh, on, um, uh, he played. Uh, his instrument, and we talk about uh, the reflexivity of, uh, of the material culture as soon the object is, is in move. Um, I don't want to pursue. So research is very important, but communication of research is also very important. And now uh, French researchers have to, to come into that new experience. Some are good, as Pierre Lemonnier, who knows very well Papouzian, but some topics can be uh, said in different ways. For example, this kind of comics we develop in technique and culture, and I'm just developing a new project called Anthropographics, uh, in which I, I try to, to write in a different way with images. You have real picture of, of, the, of the people from Benin, and uh, imaginary and, uh, and memories 
of the of the of the woman who lost uh, some technology, waving te technologies in uh, in um, in uh, Western Africa. So images are everywhere in museum, for example, in Nagoya Museum, uh, manga are very present and uh, they can be uh, used to communicate in a new way. So I'm just uh, accelerating a little bit because I, I think I'm out of time perhaps. Okay, uh, just a few examples about anthropographic projects and uh, I just wanted to, to show at what point it could be used in museum and one of my colleagues in uh, Arl Museum is also involved in comics and in museum. Uh, so, just to conclude, um, I will just try to plea for, not only for objects, I'm, I'm fascinated by uh, by objects, but also by skills, by gestures. And I think uh, André Malraux in France developed the idea of, of an imaginary museum during the, the 40s and the, then the 50s. And I think perhaps this idea is old-fashioned idea, but perhaps we can put the idea of a comparative imaginary museum, not only with objects, with, but with gestures and with skills and with know-how. And perhaps there is, with the electronic possibilities and with the, print, with the printed matters and with the museum, a new possibility of uh, giving sense to, to objects. Thank you. illustrate the process of moving down what is a commercial strip. Um, so it is more diagrammatic, but I don't see that kind of approach so much in the images that you're using. Okay, so I wonder if you could talk more about your approach. Okay, so that was kind of intuition when I started in 2006 mm -hmm. because um, uh, in France we don't have the same culture, or graphic culture that we have uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in the US. Yesterday I went to the MoMA and I saw all the mm, photographs and uh, and pictures and um, there is a real strong uh, visual culture in America we don't have. That's the first thing. Um, uh, in fact, we have a different culture, but not for for photography and uh, and uh, and I thought uh, Sol Bass was kind of. Uh, experimental uh, way to to put text and images mm -hmm. uh, in in a print and in a web in a similar way because he used um, typography in a very active way in, uh, on te in teasers so th that was kind of intuition uh, and because the modernity of, uh, of the of the of the soul bass at the end of the 50s and it was at the same time we, we had Manford books on history of, of techniques and uh, kind of hope in, uh, with techniques and uh, the idea of progress was still there at that time. 
So um, I thought it was more an intuition than a mm -hmm. uh, analysis. And for the graphics, um, narratives, I, I think, uh, for example, I just at the end, I, I, I put some design. Uh, one of uh, our students make a, a PhD on uh, uh, Fab Labs, Hacker mm -hmm. Space, and she makes the ethnography of Fab Labs around the planet. I, I don't remember, I think almost 20 different Fab Labs in different cultures. Um, even in, um, in, and so, several in America. And she was accepted uh, in the Fab Lab uh, as a common place because she was growing, because she, she brought her personal vision of, uh, of um, what, what was in process. Uh, and uh, the drawing was a way to be accepted mm -hmm. as an ethnographer. Mm -hmm. And um, what I asked to Camille uh, was to, to develop different narrative with drawings, images, mm -hmm. and we publish our, our sketch notes books in, 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 a, in one paper. And in another paper, I asked her to develop animate uh, emoticon, I think you say mm -hmm. emoticon in the US. Uh, GIF animé in French um, to explain some technologies oh, okay. and we put uh, animate GIF on the web mm -hmm. and a kind of a comic strip in, a, mm -hmm. in the journal. So we try to develop different form of mm -hmm. narration mm -hmm. with graphic experience. And because it's a way to, to give a voice of people I mean, most of uh, my colleagues just, do, just talk about Baouli, they talk about Ashwar, they talk about uh, Bali, Balinese people in a global way. They don't talk about Aminata, uh, Kanji, or anything. they don't. So uh, figuring one person and giving the possibility to, to have his own verbatim it could be uh, made in a more easier way with uh, a comic, with a band dessiné. Uh, so there is different reason. Uh, that's one uh, of the reason is uh, how to give back the voices and the speech to, to, the, to the people we work with. But it's interesting that, if I can just follow up, that, I mean, the Wagouhan's drawings have the effect of depersonalizing, right? They're universalizing. Yes, sir. The photographs, as you just answered, are a way of personalizing. So I guess my question is, <clears throat> my question was, and I can ask it through this, I mean, how, how do you think, well, one way to ask it is, how do you think the Wagouhan would feel about the journal today? But it's really about thinking of the change over the time from then to now in the, this form of anthropology in France? Uh, I, I think it would be very pleased to see uh, the attention we, we, we put uh, on drawings. Uh, I, follow, I was um, one of these last students uh, when I arrived in Paris and I went to the Collège de France to um, uh, to his seminar, and at that time he was just teaching about prehistoric art. And he never talked immediately. He was just on the blackboard, just by starting to draw a line. Change, it was on the guest course. <laughs> and he just finished, and you discover a wonderful animal. And after he was on taking. So the intelligence was coming from the line, from the drawing. And th that I tried to, to do is to mix the, um, the graphic intelligence and the analytical intelligence of the, of the researcher. And my project, Anthropographic, is to put um, graphic makers and researchers from the beginning in the project. Because we just in fact, use comic maker to illustrate in a very didactic way uh, some sketch, some ideas, some. It's usually uh, a lot of frustration from one side or from the other. 
So what I'm trying to do is to develop a common work uh, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Le Roi was very, uh, was very uh, interested by all those things. But you're right. He, he, he used or also, um, uh, I mean, uh, images to, to fix the knowledge uh, and to develop type because we were at the time of the idea of typology. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays, I think we are more interested by sketch, uh, by uh, sketching, giving different Process. processes. Process. Mm -hmm. um, Le Rabouan developed the idea of analysis of processes with the chain operatoire, but he didn't draw that with the chain operatoire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to return to Catherine's uh, question, I mean, can you say a little bit about what you think is the role of the photographs in your journal? So the very specific type or kind of photography here. It is not something that you will actually see as something that illustrates an argument, in a, let's say, in an Anglo-American Anglo way, but rather a more aesthetic proclamation. Yeah. I, I think we, we try well, to make this is the, the, the divide between the two, type, two, 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 two parts of the Atlantic, um, no. or the or linguistic thing, because I think for me, uh, maybe even for Catherine, the, a lot of it looks like uh, photography out of art form rather than um, what we expect in, let's say, journals of anthropology or, um, or that, that sociology. That wasn't actually the intent of my question. But well, I, my I, intent I, of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear what you're saying, yeah. We, we, most of our colleagues don't, don't know how to use the camera. It's different with the new generation, but usually you have to face heterogeneity, bad quality, sometimes that good surprise, but most of the time it's bad. People don't know how to handle the camera, they take very, very, very bad pictures. They, they don't know because we don't have this guy type of culture in, in, in social anthropology in France. So that's a problem. And uh, what I try to do with some, it's not a book. Still a journal, mm -hmm. so there is a lot of heterogeneity. How to manage that with the, what the people just sent to us? Uh, we do the best that we can, <laughs> but uh, and we don't reframe the picture uh, only if the young force just allows us to, 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 to do it. But in most of cases, um, uh, we we put first the quality of the document. I mean the cultural, historical, uh, scientific uh, meaning of the document. That's first. Uh, after we try to, to, to sketch it and to, to develop some new narratives. And what I've said just right now that we try to, to develop now. Uh, I, I don't say that we success, succeed in a, in a, in a in good way to to make some good ecology of, uh, of images in, in, uh, in the journal because the heterogeneity. But that's uh, in interdisciplinary journal. It's like that. Uh, we have historian. They don't have some willings. Mm -hmm. uh, archaeologists. <coughs> they believe in facts. Mm -hmm. uh, ethnographers. They want to, to to express the perception and the conceptions of the people. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of different conceptions behind. So, uh, so maybe I'll ask this question differently. What, what are the relations, in your opinion, in your journal, between the, the document, that thing that you call the document, yeah. and the photograph? Does the photograph illustrate the document, emphasize the document, symbolize the document, signifies the document, acts as an opening for the document? In our, I mean, in the Anglo-American world, I mean, in most cases, when you have a uh, 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 an image, and this morning I had to argue with an editor of a journal about the number of images they can have. It is in order to illustrate the argument. It yeah. is, and it seems that for you, the photography is a parallel structure. Yeah. So it's a little bit different 
Oh. You see, you see, this, you know, this is it's a little bit different, which makes the the role of the photography different than what we are accustomed to in uh, journals that, as an art historian or as the anthropologist who sits next to you, are more accustomed to illustrate or you think of a journal that is uh, contemporary material religion, for instance, yeah. the images that illustrate the document. And for you, the images don't illustrate the document. They operate as something completely, in a way, separate. It seems from your no, presentation. It's not, it's not separated. It's independent. Part of it. it's independent. Part of it. In most of cases, when we when we succeed, uh, we have in France we have Gallimard découvert small books for kids. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can read uh, the argument and the book only with uh, images and legends, and you are. You come into the, the idea of the book and the data. Or you can read the text, or you can have supplementary uh, illustration. And that we try to develop. Uh, it's parallel line mm -hmm. of argumentation. Uh, and different narratives in parallel. Mm -hmm. uh, on paper and on the web. Mm -hmm. We didn't succeed well, well in, on the web yet, but we, because we are not on, um, yet in the open access. <coughs> But that we want. Mm -hmm. we want to mm -hmm. My colleagues want to do. Thank you. Uh, let me uh, react to um, what you presented to us. But first, let me say that I don't claim to be an anthropologist. I'm, I consider myself, as I've redefined what I do, as an arts historian, because I'm interested in performance as much as I am in visual culture. Um, I'm the product of a multidisciplinary program at Columbia University that I had to put together myself. I took about twice as many courses as my art history colleagues or my anthropology colleagues. So we're, uh, we're in, a, in, a, in a very difficult place because the academy is based upon discipline and disciplining people in particular ways. So to fight against that, is a very difficult thing to do because we're trying to work in different ways simultaneously. Um, the issue of images along with text is an example of that. Um, an image can serve many different kinds of purposes in relation to the words about them. Um, but one of the things that I often criticize with my art history colleagues is that they talk about reading images. We don't read images, we see images. Mm -hmm. The sense of sight is different from the process of reading. So to play with the, the notions of parallel themes or ideas um, coming together in the context of an article or a, in a website is, I think, the real challenge, and, and, it's, and it's a difficult one because we forget that we are forever within a multisensorial experience. We're in the process of that, and all of our senses are shaping our experience and our understanding of what's happening around us, and yet we privilege one over the other, um, and that gets pushed to specific items kinds of di disciplines and some and certain kinds of um, you know silos you know, the difference between what we read in the Anglo world and what scholars are writing and thinking about in a francophone world is just you know is one of the answers I know one of the questions about why we're not familiar with these kinds of materials um, and as I think about it and kind of reflect on what you're talking about um, Early on in your talk, you you had some you, you were starting with this perennial discussion about art and craft between art and artifact, um, and art and craft to me is again one of these to me a very artificial division that that separates the notion of process and product. We are, you know, what, what, what comes out of anything that's around us is the making and the makers. Um, and that, that kind of division has also extended to the duality of mind and body. 
because it's the body and senses that are, in fact, called creating the process of making. Um, those, I have no specific question. It's just that you're, you're, you're making me think about these issues um, as you relate uh, the development. It's the reason why I here. use this old world arts, because it's a way to, to fusion yeah. and to, to avoid this division. Um, but what you said think, makes me think into one of my main influences, John Berger, who is a sociologist, art historian, journalist, uh, essayist, who, who, was it, who, who tried that at the beginning of the 80s. He, he wrote a book, An Our Way to Tell Stories. Yeah. Another way of okay. seeing. No, 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 way, no, 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 it's a French, it, it wasn't pro translated into English, I think. It's only in French. And he, he wrote a book with a photographer, a few pages, and 200 pages only with photographs mm -hmm. on the social life in the Alps. Yeah. And it's very, very efficient, very, very, very good experience. No, it did appear in English. Yeah. Sorry? It did appear in English when it I first came out, yes. Oh. And, he, and he did a subsequent one, or before it called A Seventh Man, about a yes. doctor, which was juxtaposing photographs with text, yeah. which they'd assembled rather like Gide had assembled a, a novel based on pictures. Yeah. Um, and, and Gide and Maurice Denis did this in 1899. Yeah, yeah. But it was a self cut And Berger, but I have to say Berger did come back and say that he didn't think it had been successful. Mm -hmm. And that it was, he was grasping for something that he felt neither images nor text could do on their own. Mm -hmm. But he had not created a third form which successfully exemplified his ideas. Or what, when I say grasping is perhaps right, not his ideas, what he was looking for. But I think that. Sorry, I, I butted in here, I didn't know. but I was intrigued by this too because I also edit a journal which uh, uses images constantly. And much as we feel that the scholarly article is very limited, it can be checked. It can, you can go back and find what you need from it in a way that I don't think you can from film or graphic novels or um, other forms of presentation. And I wondered what you felt about that, in that uh, you're gaining something by the mixture of media, but I would say you're losing the ability to specify certain points and trace them to their origin. Uh, I, I have no um, simple answer or uh, reaction to, to your remarks. Uh, I think the journal is one, th one thing. Now I'm coming into a more limited uh, project with a collection. Mm -hmm. uh, with graphic novels, but involving photography, mm -hmm. putting photographies and creating some, creating some bias, some accident, uh, because the meaning of a photograph is different than a drawing, and if you put side by side kind of story using both, you you create kind of complexity, which and we, we need to play with this kind of complexity. There is a huge uh, um, field to, to, to play with. And uh, from my experience, we are very poor uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, editor, editorial processes in France. We have images on one side, we have text on another, we, we put some, okay, documents to illustrate an idea, and no more. 
who are very poor. So I, I, what I, I tried to do, to do with the journal for some years, mm -hmm. and now what I try to do with, uh, with comics and um, on dessiné, is to, to make different layers of meanings mm -hmm. uh, into narratives. And of course, using fiction also. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because uh, how to keep the objectivation process of the science uh, active using fictions in some cases mm -hmm. and using uh, um, time. I think when I watch um, uh, a new photographer uh, and when I, uh, I watch it in a, in a book, um, it's a way to, to see it and you know, to read it. When I, I discover the same photographer in a, in a room and then just walking uh, and discovering all these images, uh, I come into a new, a different world. Uh, so we need time to, to develop sequences and narratives. Um, and the difficulty is to how to manage in a, in a one book different uh, stories and uh, with 10 pages, 20 pages, two pages, um, the reader is able to to, to manage such heterogeneity. So this kind of question uh, are must take in such project. So do you think, I mean, it's fascinating as a project for um, a publication, but my question is a little bit, I mean, there's bits of it like uh, loose genetic material, so to speak, floating around the table <laughs> here. I mean, it's, you're moving kind of beyond what most people expect from a learned journal, right? Um, why keep it in a format which you seem to be in every way trying to move beyond? Why not just have a series of books where you could do anything you want instead of, in other words, what is the gain for you to retain a format that you are trying to subvert constantly. I've got fixed for, format now. <laughs> I, I don't know exactly what uh, we, we, we can do with this idea right now. And I, I, I went to Japan to discuss with um, university publisher, uh, Kyoto University Press, and uh, they are interested. Uh, but I'm not sure the scenarios in France or academic publishers in France could follow this kind of uh, uh, project. Mm -hmm. So I will probably move to uh, public publishers and, uh, uh, and try to, um, to develop more alternative uh, way to tell science in a different way. And the idea, I don't know if I will succeed, but the idea is that uh, because you have strong cultural view, uh, visual culture in America, very strong cultural visual in uh, in Japan, in France, with graphics, novels too. Uh, but if you want to look around the world, we are the, the free main culture with graphic novels, um, and it's very interesting to, to compare three <coughs> different traditions and uh, how and. Uh, and what I observe that um, art science use a lot of manga and comics. And even in the uh, US, uh, some of the uh, students uh, make their presentation or their PhD uh, in, uh, in comics. Mm -hmm. I discovered that yeah. uh, okay. in, uh, in physics and uh, uh, in different art science. Mm -hmm. But we are quite bad in social science. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the one thing that is absent in a way is, is the video especially since you're now moving to the website, right? And all of us who read, for instance, the New York Times, I think it's getting to the fact that most New York Times readers, if they read the New York Times online, either on, on this machine or the computer, they're basically exposed to 10% of the time to watching some kind of a video or recording rather than actually reading the text. And since you moved yourself into the, the world of the web, I wonder, I mean, isn't the next frontier will be the video clip? We, we, we put some interviews on the web. Mm -hmm. we, we made uh, some interviews, some videos on sec uh, operational sequences of 
different uh, uh, activities uh, on the web, but um, it's a, it was a call in the proposition of, of offers. Of course, we give them the chance to publish in that way, but uh, in fact, most of people are, are not so, uh, I would say, innovative. They, they, they are quite quiet because they want to publish in a very proper manner to be evaluated in a good way and in good, good notes uh, at the end. So a better salary or promotion. So I would say exactly <laughs> like that. Uh, it's quite risky to, to, to do that. But there's that, a strange thing that there's a sense of retro in your publication as well. That the, 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 any I'm saying that as a compliment, not as a criticism, that the, the, the illustration, the black and white illustration, the magna type, comic type illustration is the, is the way to go. And it is way to go even for younger scholars. Uh, and, and the few French scholars of, of my generation that I know really are still into that, right? Because it reminds them a certain heritage that is, might have been lost over the years of, you know, of, of, of uh, techniques of, uh, what was it, uh, Jean-Claude Schmidt did with uh, uh, gestures, history yeah, of, of gestures, right? And history of gestures, since you cannot recreate them, you're always drawing them, right? So it's always this r sense of a retro rather than but forward even, thinking. But I think that's a very strong point. But it's not just retro, right? It's not just it's your homage right. to the Wagwan. It's the same exact way in which archaeologists today still draw yeah. the site, mm -hmm. because there's a, something in the line drawing that can't be extracted. There's the precision that, that I think Paul was talking about, that the photograph loses, and the, the line drawing, the diagrammatic, to go back to what Catherine said at the beginning, has uh, something uh, stable to it, yeah. whereas the photographs are very associative, inevitably. You make the point. I think there's a question here of, of narrative versus non-narrative. I don't think it's image and text. I think it has to do with whether or not there's a time element in sequence. Mm -hmm. So it's also then, I mean, so for example, if you have a photograph, the minute you put text on it, it does something different than the photograph by itself. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that might be the question here also. I mean, poetry, too, is, can be a non-narrative form. So how much interpretive license are you willing to grant your audience? And it seems to me you're granting them a lot of interpretive license, which is very different yes, um, and very you know, yes, exciting. You're right. That's a big, big problem, because uh, we, we didn't work enough about our readership. And um, if we publish for our colleagues, for our peers, it's one we will go in one way. We publish for the people audience, we will go in a different way. There's a reason why we split the journal into, into two. Uh, for this one, you have very short paper, and uh, the long paper on web, and uh, there are very uh, hard paper for, with documents, and all the bibliography, all references, all the notes, and interviews, and many things. It's for our course. Uh, and we put uh, a simpler, but uh, way to, to, to narrate for a broader audience on the printed matter. So we, we split the journal in, in, a, in a, for two readership. In fact. Mm -hmm. So perhaps mm -hmm. it's a way to, to answer the question, but uh, it's not it. Um, in my work on art in the senses, um, I've been thinking about doing my next book as an e-book on the web, because uh, it would give me images, it would give me text, it would give me sound, it could give me video clips for gesture movement, uh, the sense of motion, and so on. And yet it still is limited. So um, I'm thinking what you ought to do is do your next project and offer your audiences uh, a virtual reality machine <laughs> in which the other senses can also be incorporated. Yes, you can I'll try ju just give, give me the, <laughs> the publisher. <laughs> I think we've come to the end of the formal part uh, of this informal but fascinating evening for which we are Thank grateful. Um, we'll open the door for some refreshments. By all means, browse the books, please. Try, and now I'll ventriloquize our librarian. 
try to keep your refreshments apart from the books that belong to the library's collection. And thank you very much. Thank you. For those who are interested, part two uh, is lunchtime tomorrow, 12.15, on the question of really material culture and primates. Thank you.